Hey there, ESL. So we are going to be reading this story called Building Bridges, um, which is adapted from a longer short story by Andrea Davis Pickney. So during this Ed Puzzle video, I'm going to be pausing the video to ask you questions related to plot and related to character. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the first start of the, the beginning of our story. At first, Mama Lil said it was plain and simple. No. Then, like always, she spoke her full mind. Baby, get that backward idea out your head. That grit work ain't no place for you. And besides, I ain't never heard of no girls to be doing that. You need to begin yourself a real summer job, something civilized. Mama Lil pushed her breakfast plate aside and took a final drag on her cigarette. And don't ask me again about signing that permission paper, she said. I ain't going to be the one who follows you out to take part in such foolishness. I leaned back in my kitchen chair, my arms folded tight. The chair's vinyl stuck to my skin, taping itself to the place where my t-shirt scooped down in the back. It was as if, like Mama Lil, that chair wanted to hold me in its clutches. I'd been living with Mama Lil since I was six, when my own mama and daddy were killed in an apartment building fire. Lillian Jones was my mom's mother. Everybody on our street called my grandmother Mama Lil, and that's what I called her too. Mama Lil and I had been button heads ever since I could remember, and the older I got, the more at odds we were. She thought I weighed too much and dressed badly. I thought she smoked too much and overdid it with the fake gold chains. Time after time, she asked me, how you ever going to land a decent man with those chunk them chunky arms and those t-shirts that put your navel on parade? No self-respecting 17-year-old should be letting it all hang out like that. But then, too, I had a sister-to-sister -sister connection to Mama Lil that not many kids had with their grandmas. I was Mama Lil's only true family, and she was the only real parent I had. If I ever left her, she'd have nobody, and if she passed on, I'd be alone in the world. For weeks, I'd been asking Mama Lil to let me join the youth renovation team. It was a group of kids that had been chosen by city officials to work with engineers to help repair the Brooklyn Bridge. The project would last the summer and pay good money. It would help me get to college where I wanted to study engineering. But Mama Lil wasn't having it. To her, I was stooping to do a bunch of low-down mess work. Truth be told, Mama Lil was scared of something she didn't know. She hardly ever left her neighborhood in Brooklyn. To her, the Brooklyn Bridge was a mystery. But I think that deep down, Mama Lil was afraid something bad would happen to me, the same way it happened to my mama and daddy. Also, Mama Lil couldn't read or write very well. I read most of her mail to her and helped her sign her checks. The two-page consent form she had to sign giving me permission to work on the bridge project was a challenge to her pride. Then there was the fact that I would be the only girl working with the bridge crew. If God had meant you to do man's work, she would have made you a man, or he would have made you a man, she said. All these strikes stood against me ever getting to work on that bridge. But the biggest obstacle of all, the thing that made Mama Lil the most stubborn, was my dream of becoming an engineer. Mama Lil didn't fully understand what an engineer was. I tried to explain it to her. I'd shown her my sketchbook full of drawings of city structures and machines, but Mama Lil didn't know any engineers. She'd never seen one at work. And to make matters worse, she asked her friends down at Remley's Beauty Parlor about engineering. They'd convinced her that I was headed down the wrong path. Ain't no black woman doing no engine-ing, she'd said. Engineering, I'd corrected. In some respects, Mama Lil was right. It was true that there weren't many black women engineers. I knew from the get-go that I'd hoped to become an engineer. My road ahead would be lonely and hard, but I wanted to build bridges more than anything. A week passed, a week of Mama Lil and I not speaking about the bridge project or the permission form. It was due, signed by her in four days. That's when the renovation was supposed to begin. 
On the Saturday night before the project was to start, Mama Lil did something that got me real mad. She brought home a summer job application from Remley's Beauty Parlor. Baby, I went and down I went and down you a big done you a big favor, she said. Ernest Remley needs somebody to sweep hair and clean her sinks. She can't pay you nothing to start but you get a heap of training and by next summer you'd be doing perms and manicures and getting tips on top of regular salary. And you could even bring your paper tablet. You could draw during your breaks. Mama Lil put the application down on the coffee table. Baby, if you put your mind to it, you could be awfully good at doing hair. Give it a chance, child, she urged. My forehead and upper lip grew moist in the sweat that anger brings on. Mama Lil, I began, look at me. But Mama Lil lit her cigarette. She inhaled, then closed her eyes to release a stream of smoke. I'm enjoying my cig, baby. It tastes better with my eyes closed. I leaned in the doorway, my anger rising. Mama Lil, your eyes are always closed, closed to seeing me. I said, I don't want to spend my summer sweeping hair. The bridge is where my heart's at, Mama Lil. She was doing her best to tune me out. Yeah, that's right, I said, my voice straining with frustration. Try to make me and my dreams disappear like your puffs of smoke. Mama Lil opened her eyes. They looked weary and her expression looked pained. She sighed, baby, I'm an old woman. I don't have many of my own dreams to go after. Her voice trailed off to silence. Then her face softened. For the first time ever, I saw Mama Lil's eyes fill with regret. What little bit of dreaming I got left in me, she said, I'm putting to you. Mama Lil let out a heavy breath. Then she admitted what we'd both known all along. Your dreams are the kind that'll take you away from here, baby. They'll take you away from your Mama Lil. I shrugged. Mama Lil said, that's an upsetting truth, baby. It makes my heart hurt every time I think on it. Mama Lil, I got to find my way. If that bridge renovation wasn't tapping on my soul, I'd go ahead and sweep hair down at Rimley's. For once, Mama Lil was looking into my face, hearing my words. Let me go, Mama Lil. Let me dream, I pleaded softly. Mama Lil sat as still as a statue. I reached into my pocket to find the bridge project consent form. I unfolded it and set it on the coffee table next to the application from Rimley's. Mama Lil, I said carefully, if you don't sign this, if you won't sign it, I'll sign it myself. I've been helping you sign checks and letters for years now. I can sign your name on this consent form. Nobody will know the difference. The next morning, I awoke to the smell of ham coming from the kitchen. My clock said 536 and the bridge renovation crew was scheduled to meet at 7. I threw on my t-shirt and jeans and grabbed my sketchbook. Hey, Mama Lil, I said, entering the kitchen. Mama Lil peered at me over the top of her narrow glasses, glasses she wore only for reading. Sit, baby, your ham's ready, she said. I shrugged and slid into my chair. The hands on the kitchen clock were settling on six o'clock. Mama Lil served both our plates. She sat down across from me and started eating. She was acting like it was any other morning. She chatted on about her late-night comedy show and the pigeons that nest on the ledge of her bedroom window. I was certain she'd done away with the consent form for the bridge project and was doing her best to ignore the whole thing. I ate in silence. I was wondering if the bridge crew leader would let me onto the project without a signed permission. I'd have to leave for the site soon if I wanted to get there on time. I finished my last bite of ham, then I firmly said, Mama Lil, I'm going to the bridge. I know, baby. And that's when Mama Lil reached into her pocket of her house dress and pulled out the consent form. You're going to need this, she said, sliding the, new, the papers across the table. I unfolded the form, which had become worn and crumpled, and Mama Lil hadn't signed it. It was the same as it had always been. Mama Lil could see the upset pinching at my face. Now hold it, baby, she said. Don't be so quick to put on that down-in-the-mouth expression. But you didn't sign the form, Mama Lil. Calm down, child, Mama's little tone was solid. She said, you're jumping out the gate too fast. The project's going to start without me, I snapped. 
Mama Lil's eyes looked red tired. I've been up most of the night, baby, she said. I've been thinking, praying, and trying my best to read that permission paper. They sure got a whole bunch of words on that thing just to say I'm going to help let you help fix a bridge. I could feel my whole body fill with relief. Mama Lil said, I may not know how to read that good, but I do know I ain't supposed to sign something I ain't fully read. Mama Lil pushed her glasses up her nose. They were speckled with dots of grease that had sprung from the hot ham skillet. Will you help me read the permission paper, baby? She asked. Will you help me understand what it's saying to me? I slid my chair to Mama Lil's side of the table. Together we read the consent form. When we were done, Mama Lil took a pen from her house dress pocket. She held it awkwardly and signed the form with her crooked handwriting. She gave her signature a good looking over. Then she folded the form and pressed it into my hand. Baby, that bridge is lucky to have you, she said. I hugged Mama Lil good and hard. Then I got up to go. I smiled big right at her. Yeah, it is, I said.